everyone. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. I am to our today's press conference. I'm Anthony Rowley, a former president of the club, and I'm not the official moderator today. The official moderator is on his way, but I, I want to at least get the, 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 the conference started. Um, and I, I think you've all read the notices, so you're fully aware of the subject of concerned citizens about the Ukraine war. And they are making strong efforts to bring in a, an end to this war or to have a, a ceasefire negotiated. So let me right away introduce the speakers. Um, start it on, in the order of speaking. Uh, we have uh, Haru, Haruki Wada, who, who is chair of the group of, of concerned Japanese historians and professor emeritus at the University of Tokyo. He'll be followed by Kumiko Haba, to my right, who is president International Studies Association Asia Pacific, and following uh, what is, uh, will be Kenji Is Isazaki, who is professor at Tokyo University of Foreign Studies. So, since we're a little late in getting started, um, um, what is that? Would you like to lead off, please? Would you like to begin? <coughs> thank you. Uh, <coughs> thank you for inviting us to your uh, respectable club. I am Wada Haruki, a Japanese historian who worked in the Institute of Social Science, University of Tokyo. Uh, modern Russian history and contemporary Korean history are my speci specialities. As I have dedicated 60 years to the study of Russia, I was deeply shocked by the beginning of the Ukrainian, Ukrainian war by Putin's Russia. This is no doubt an impossible fratricide war. I closely follow the process of the war to know that on the fifth day, Ukrainians and Rus Ukrainian and Russian delegates met at Gomery to negotiate. It seemed to me that both sides wished to stop the war if possible. Therefore, on March 9th, I organized online uh, discussion of my colleagues about this war and proposed a statement of concerned Japanese historians in which an Immediate ceasefires appealed to Russians and Ukrainians, Russians and Ukrainians. An intervention of three governments, Japan, China, and India, uh, was asked to arbitrate an armistice in armistice uh, negotiation. Thirteen scholars wished to join my, me and sign the statement. We, with two persons, visited our foreign ministry to deliver our statement. And in a week, we visited the Russian embassy uh, to meet ambassador. Uh, Russian ambassador spoke about our statement and Russian official position in 50 minutes, and we discussed with him in 50 minutes. At the end of March, uh, both Ukrainians and Russian delegates met in Istanbul, and Ukrainian delegates conveyed their condition of ceasefire. Ukraine will cease to apply for membership of NATO and is ready to negotiate with Russia about uh, the status of Crimea for, 20, for, one, for 15 years. This gave us a great hope for ceasefire. Russian forces retreated from the front of Kiev, but the hope disappeared immediately. Uh, once over 400 bodies of citizens were found in the town of Bucha near Kiev. Calls for rose 
criticizing the military, Russian military for war crimes. We saw an upsurge of new war efforts to, of indignant Ukrainians. Uh, but some doubts appeared that President Biden also addressed March 27th might have exerted any influences on this process. Uh, or, or, uh, the hope of ceasefire disappeared immediately. Uh, we decided with new friends, Okamoto Atsushi and uh, Professor Isezaki Kenji, to issue a new statement of alarm. We fear that some countries might want the war to go on until the Putin government surrenders. The second statement was signed by 21 Japanese intellectuals and 19 South Korean intellectuals and issued on May 9th, on the eve of President Biden's visit to South Korea and Japan. We demanded once more an immediate ceasefire <coughs> and asked not only China and India, but also South African Republic <coughs> and ASEAN countries, Indonesia and Vietnam, to take the responsibility of arbitrator in armistice negotiation. But the cruel war is still raging, and there is no sign of hope, hope of immediate ceasefire. So we decided to ask the person uh, of our uh, last hope, Antonio Gutierrez, Secretary General of the United Nations, for further intervention for peace building. Okamoto Atsushi, the retired president of one of the oldest Japanese book publishers, wrote a draft of letter and finished the work and sent Secretary General Gutierrez uh, on July 7th. The open letter was signed by 48 Japanese citizens and intellectuals, 52 South Korean intellectuals, four other intellectuals, and two Japanese organizations. The last sentence of the letter is as follows. We share the views of the Secretary General and are encouraged by your efforts to immediate ceasefire. We look forward to your new steps. Thank you. <coughs> Sorry. OK, thank you very much uh, for that opening. All right, have a son, uh, if you'd like okay. to go ahead. Thank you very much for your invitation. Um, my name is Kumiko Haba, uh, Professor uh, Emeritus at Aoyama Gakuin University, the President of International Studies Association in Asia Pacific. Um, my title is Who Do We Wish a Ceasefire in the Russo-Ukrainian War? We will not fight against China as well. Could you speak close to the microphone? Oh, really? Okay. Ah, oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, now I'd, I'd like to start. Uh, the first, why the ceasefire? It is a time to lay down weapons, stop wars, and consider diversity in Ukraine. Um, already uh, on February 25, the Ukrainian Zelensky proposed a ceasefire negotiation. Since then, the ceasefire uh, talks uh, were starting uh, and continued until now. Uh, to the end of March, both Ukraine and Russia agreed on the neutrality of Ukraine. 
the Bucha incident uh, turned the uh, possibility of the uh, ceasefire um, upside down. Uh, many facts are hidden without this discussion. There is also pressure against freedom of speech within even Japan as well. The war is already five months. Um, sacrifices uh, to Ukrainian citizens is widening. Life is treasure. It is an Okinawa word. Million Ukrainian refugees also wish to go back home and peace. UN um, Secretary General uh, Guterres started to work together uh, with Asia, Africa, Latin America, and other regions that do not agree with the alliance of values between the US, EU, and Japan to reach a uh, ceasefire. Second, the essence of the problem uh, beyond uh, media uh, taboo. <laughs> Ukraine um, polarization, uh, sorry, simple polarization of uh, Russia and Ukrainian neglection, uh, neglecting Ukraine's um, multi-ethnicity. US military um, I supported in Western Ukraine, Russian mil military supported in Eastern Ukraine. First, why did Russia invade Ukraine? Stop the threat of the uh, latest uh, weapons of the war, um, such as American uh, weapons, uh, Javelin and HIMARS, and NATO military training leaders are entering Ukraine, which is twice as large as Germany. The problem, um, sorry. Um, the problem is start in a Maidan revolution and the US, Biden involved in tw uh, 2014, not start in February 2022. Second, why does the US continue to support Western Ukraine? Elimination of Russia in East Ukraine. Why is the US sending weapons to mass, dis uh, mass destruction um, to Western Ukraine? Recapture of key areas, East Ukraine, a heavy industrial zone, and South Ukraine, Black Sea, a commercial and shipping zone. The US strike missiles into Russia's soft underbury or throat, um, <laughs> and uh, immobile uh, Moscow, immobilize Moscow. The essential goal is uh, overthrow Putin impossible, uh, if possible. The third, in the background of the war in Ukraine, there is U.S. wariness of China. The intention of the American Biden administration is to continue America's uh, unipolar rule. However, World Bank, IMF, and OECD have statistically clarified that the U.S. will be overtaken by China in 10 years. The real aim of the U.S. is to contain China in East Asia, expose the relationship between Russia and China. In order, to, in order not to increase the tension of Taiwan emergency in East Asia, I believe that Japan and South Korea in East Asia need to be uh, cornerstones of appeals for peace and ceasefire. Fourth, why did Japanese and South Korean intellectuals put out 100 signatures and statement to appear to Guterres for the ceasefire? 
Mr. Okamoto, uh, Professor Wada uh, mentioned, uh, former president of Iwanami Publisher, has made um, great achievement. He and Professor Wada and Professor Isezaki wrote appeal for uh, cooperation with Japan and South Korea and reconciliation <coughs> with North Korea as well. He created network for peace between two countries, Japan and South Korea. I myself believe that the mutual understanding between Japan and China in East Asia, rather than militarization of Okinawa and Taiwan, are the uh, key of the stabili stabilizing and maintaining peace in East Asia. Calling for the ceasefire in Ukraine war for a from Asia is the basis for not starting a war in East Asia. Why does the US send weapons of, and missiles into not only Ukraine, but Taiwan and Okinawa, sending, sending battlefield across the Pacific Ocean and appealing for free navigation? The US worst scenario is uh, China economic growth overtaken the US and become the top of the world. The last conclusion, ceasefire, not, not sending <coughs> weapons. Zelensky demands arms, the US and NATO give them to Ukraine. But with the weapon, they are destroying Ukraine people. <coughs> Russia is not only one killing Ukrainians, but Western is also killing as well. What is needed in, is a ceasefire. It's not about sending weapons and killing Ukraine Russians as well. Send neutral UN peacekeeping force into the buffer zone, if, if possible. Russia and Ukraine both lay down their weapons. US and NATO stop sending weapons. The ceasefire <coughs> negotiation are based on the Minsk agreement too. The autonomy of Eastern Ukraine is determined by local elections. America and Russia will not interfere to Ukraine. To continue the war until it is won is to repeat the slaughter of Hiroshima, Nagasaki, and Okinawa. Nobody wants that again. Ceasefire. Stop sending weapons. Let the international communication, uh, sorry, let the international community Hope for peace and stability, not <coughs> armed forces. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you very much. Very most interesting. So, um, Isazaki san, if you would like to take over, please. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, everybody, uh, good morning. And on Monday, which is yesterday, yes, there was a good news. Uh, that is the first shipment of the grain okay, left the port of Odessa just yesterday. Okay. It's a good sign. Okay. It's a good news also. Finally, came after the UN and the Turkey brokered so-called grain agreement between Russia and Ukraine last month. Right? Obviously, it raises the hope of easing growing food crisis affecting the people in, in the globe. <clears throat> also, we sincerely hope that the stabilization of this grain deal will contribute to form the foundation for the further UN role for the real deal. <clears throat> I'm talking about the real deal. The Ukraine, <clears throat> Ukraine crisis caused by Russia's serious violation of UN Charter has already passed half a year, but the war has continued and without convergence. And enormous war crimes are afflicting the people every day. 
Furthermore, there are the concerns that heightening tensions between Russia and the West will develop into the war in which nuclear weapons are likely mobilized. In the midst of <clears throat> these drastic changes in the world, two conflicting, two conflicting concepts appear dividing the international community. One is so-called justice camp that want to achieve peace by letting the devil, letting the devil beat the umbrella. Okay. In prosecuting the guilty parties. Okay. Other one is a so-called peace camp that want to prioritize the convergence and the stability of the situation even if it swallows the devil's anger and compromise the justice. But we, <laughs> we are neither of them. While pursuing justice based on international humanitarian law and international, humanita uh, international human rights law, we believe that international conflict is caused by differences in the interpretation of justice between party to the war. Focusing on the relief of the innocent civilians, citizens suffering from the war at this very moment, we would like to pursue a way to complement justice by realizing immediate ceasefire rather than ending the war itself. And pursuing respite, pursuing respite from senseless carnage rather than immediate ruling of the justice, so that roadmap for the realization of ultimate justice is negotiated. We aim to create diplomatic space for the dialogue and engagement that is indispensable for that purpose, and to form public opinion to urge United Nations to intervene. The core member of our group okay, have compiled the statement. Okay, that is your, at your hand. Right? Each member of this, uh, this group has a variety of background. And although there were the differences in the way to deal with Russia, particularly, no one disagrees with Russia's illegality. Okay. The illegality of Russia is nothing but serious violation of so-called Jus ad verb. That is Article 51 of United Nations Charter. This division, similar to justice camp and peace camp, exists even among us. Sometimes it appears when we debate among, among ourselves. But what is common among us is nothing but longing for immediate ceasefire just to save humanity. Please understand that. How to achieve this? We think it is our mission to predict and propose it by the realism rather than the emotion. The war will always cease fire, okay? War will end. Unless there is the complete victory by either side. A cease fire comes automatically when both sides are exhausted and fall into the situation where the higher objective of the war of both sides cannot be achieved. Therefore, our aim is to accelerate it by as much as even the day with the intervention of third party. That mainly we are talking about uh, the UN. <clears throat> we envisage that new, the new ceasefire, if possible, new ceasefire will be arbitrated with a ceasefire line 
as, prof uh, as Professor Haber described, and maybe a buffer zone setting such as the content of the deal immediately after 2014 Minsk agreement. But this time, how will the ceasefire line to be drawn? That is the question. Maybe it will converge into the so-called status quo ante. Status quo ante. But is that border just before 24th of February this year, or the one of 1991 collapse of Soviet Union, as Mr. Zelensky insists nowadays? We don't know. But in any case, the United States and its allies continue to pour heavy weapons into Ukraine in order to bring Russian controlled area as close as even one meter to the status quo ante, whatever the status quo ante is. However, how many innocent civilians should be killed by sticking, by we are sticking on the gain and loss of the one meter? The failure of Minsk agreement at that time must be used as a lesson, not as a resignation. In general, breakup of the ceasefire results from accumulation of small and sporadic violations. That is why it is important that each of those individual violations is immediately investigated and arbitrated as it occurs, so that confidence building measure won't be interrupted. Here comes the role of truth supervision team as a third party organization. The formation of strengths and mandate given to the OSCE at that time has to be re-examined carefully re-examined. And further, if possible, empowered this time by broader UN authorization and involvement. So what is the UN authorization? We know that ongoing dysfunction of UN Security Council. That is why we urge to revive U4P resolution United for Peace Resolution, mm -hmm. it was way back 1950, okay, which allows UN General Assembly to conduct emergency special deliberation on Security Council dysfunction by Beatles. Okay. All of us know that <clears throat> the case of Second Middle East War, which is Suez Crisis in 1956, when Britain and France, the permanent members of the Security Council, became the party to the conflict. Then Security Council was dysfunctional, as just like today, that the UN at that time, General Assembly, was hailed by Canadian Foreign Minister Lester Pearson, who won the Nobel Peace Prize for this achievement. The UN Emergency Forces was launched which became the starting point of later UN peacekeeping operations. In Japan, I'm talking to Japanese journalists here, there seems to be surprisingly childish misreading that ceasefire is surrender. So little explanation needed here. It should be understood that ceasefire is a temporal phase, has nothing to do with final outcome of the war. The idea behind the ceasefire is that such issues like a territorial attribution of the issue of self-determination of certain ethnic groups and essentially, more importantly, war crime okay, should be discussed over time after the battle is interrupted. 
What could be dealt with this regard would be only roadmap to get there in the phase of negotiating ceasefire. Roadmap. Regarding war crime, war crime, that is defined and whose prosecution is governed by so-called use in bureau, that is international humanitarian law, where the invader, Russia, and invaded Ukraine are both equal party to the war. Okay, please understand that. It is necessary to understand how much time and effort it took to prosecute past war crime. And what was the result in the past? It's a lengthy procedure. It takes maybe decades. The longer the ceasefire is delayed, the more war crime will occur and more evidence essential for the prosecution will be decayed. That is why calling for ceasefire is, is, is primarily important. At last, <coughs> sorry, taking much time, Mr. Chairman. In this appeal of ours to you know, UN Secu uh, Secretary General, we are most grateful that collaboration with Korean experts okay, was realized. They know, the Korean knows, irreplaceable value of calling for area ceasefire much, much, much more than Japanese. How many lives were sacrificed by the delay in agreeing on the ceasefire? That is leading to the current 38th parallel in the Korean Peninsula. Perpetual armistice. That is another realistic indication of a future ceasefire we are talking about. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed. Okay, well, our official. Um, our moderator has now arrived. If he'd like to take over, I'm more than happy to hand over to you. Uh, uh, yes? Okay, fine. And then I will ask some questions from the floor. Okay, uh, sorry for the complications. Um, I'm Teddy Jimbo, I'm a moderator now. So uh, we're gonna go to Q&A, and uh, um, please raise your hand, and uh, if you are designated, come, come forward. There are two microphones on the, both sides of the, uh, the head table, and uh, come up and uh, set your affiliation, and please ask questions only. Uh, any questions? <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Really, I, am, I write for the South China Morning Post and various other publications. Thank you for a very interesting explanation. Um, what I, what uh, certainly it's a fascinating um, situation that you've described. But where is your strongest support coming from? You're you're a, you're a, a voluntary group of concerned Japanese historians, and you've got. Um, support. You've discussed this issue with many countries, and but where is the strongest support coming from? Does that include China, for example, and does it also include um, historians or others in the United States and in <laughs> Europe? <laughs> so, a question addressed to whoever would like to answer. Who wants to take that? It doesn't sound like it. <clears throat> You raise a very problem of our, of our movement. Uh, uh, when we, uh, uh, we, we wish to issue uh, the second statement, 
and uh, we wish to have a joint uh, statement, United States and uh, South Korean Japanese statement. But uh, uh, our friends, uh, Americans, uh, did not answer to, to our appeal. Uh, so uh, I, I send mail the famous three, three United States uh, intellectuals, uh, respected intellectuals. Uh, one is my old friends. Uh, is, but no, no answer, no answer. And uh, later, uh, one of the, one of them uh, answered that uh, it is strong uh, uh, regulation or control of speech. In, in the United States. So uh, if you uh, uh, show the, uh, uh, if you, you, if you pay uh, during, during uh, full, full respect to Ukrainians, resistance effort, uh, then uh, you immediately you, you will be attacked. Uh, so, uh, so this person proposed to, to, uh, to amend some words of my, our, our statement. So, uh, uh, so we we complied with uh, his uh, uh, request, and we amended uh, some expressions. But he he did not join, of course. Uh, yeah. uh, did not sign. So this is. Uh, the situation uh, the, in Western countries, in the United States and European countries, mm -hmm. there is a very w w weak uh, response. And there is a uh, uh, spe speech is uh, uh, controlled. Uh, uh, we are always feeling that uh, from the first day of our uh, movement, uh, we, 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 are, uh, uh, we are outcast uh, from the main media. Uh, but uh, in other countries also, a similar situation exists. So this is a, a problem, the very pr problem of this uh, days. So, so in Japan, we are we are gradually expanding our, our, our influence, um, but. Uh, uh, we are, uh, for the time being, we excluded from the main media. Uh, mm. 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 Ah, do so. Do so. Oh. 
Please come. Uh, so sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm a researcher of the international relations and comparative studies, uh, comparative politics as well. So, uh, in my opinion, perhaps uh, there is a um, proxy war between uh, U.S. and China rather than U.S. Russia. So um, it is very similar situation in the Ukrainian war and uh, the East Asian uh, um, tension uh, is increasing uh, in Taiwan, Okinawa, or South China Sea, uh, Senkaku Islands as well. And the United States also mentioned about the uh, Taiwan uh, uh, possibility of the uh, emergency. So that's why um, we are very much uh, tensioned uh, about the East Asian uh, war as well. Uh, as you know, um, Japanese people also consider about the um, more weapons or uh, double, twice uh, um, uh, defending uh, uh, military uh, finance. Uh, as well, so perhaps uh, it is a very um, difficult situation. Perhaps uh, a Japanese constitution also might be changed in uh, Article 9. Uh, so that's why um, perhaps uh, in the United States consideration and the Japanese consideration is completely another. Uh, U.S. is not uh, fight uh, in their land they only uh, send the uh, weapons. Uh, but uh, in Japanese or uh, Taiwanese or uh, uh, Chinese as well, we will fight against each other using American weapons like Ukraine. So uh, we are very much afraid in the future uh, East Asian war will happen or not. That's why we a uh, Japanese historian or Japanese uh, international relations his, uh, relationist uh, consider we don't want to make a war in East Asia. We are diligent, we are um, very uh, calm uh, people, <laughs> we are very uh, skillful about the economy, so we'd like to use such tools and we'd like to make our, our world more uh, prosperity, economic development, and peace. So that's why we started to um, against the Ukrainian war and ceasefire. Thank you very much. Yeah, just to supplement uh, uh, what Asin says, says uh, it's very complicated in the sense, you know, I don't know how should I call, kind of censorship, censorship, uh, prevailing the media, even our conscience over the this issue of the Ukraine war, it's much much severe there, or United States, or even Europe down here. It's really surprising. We came to know this one after contacting, you know, our counterpart in the United States and Europe. All right. I guess the complicity comes in, like, let's say, you know. Uh, she's fire is good things always, okay? okay? Secession of hostilities is a good things, all right? But it imply engagement with the enemy, which is, in this case is uh, Mr. Putin, <laughs> Mr. Putin. So engaging Mr. Putin is a very more complicated than here in the United States, maybe, because the issue of Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump. That is a cause of compli complicacy. Okay. Now, regarding censorship, it's, it's, it's much equally strong here in Europe. Okay. I have one of the, my students become now the professor in the oldest university of Netherlands. Uh, you, can, you can name it. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't want to mention. All right. And she complained and that you know, even the censorship is prevailed in the campus, university campus. Mm -hmm. Like let's say, issue of the Poland, other country, okay? You may recall, before the war, Poland has been accused of human rights violation over bru brutally pushing away that the refugees, mm -hmm. Afghan and from Syria, okay? Yeah. Please recall that, okay? Mm -hmm. 
Now Poland is a kind of star. <laughs> All right? So to hold, to open the conference, academic conference on the refugees, fate of the refugees nowadays in the university campus, you cannot do that because we cannot, they cannot accuse Poland. The, flow, the problem of the flow of refugees still continues. Right. So this is an example of kind of censorship in the conscience is prevailing nowadays after this war. Okay. Okay, um, is there a next question? <laughs> yeah, wait, 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 a follow up or, or a separate question? No, go ahead, go ahead, come up, come up and go ahead, yeah. Um, I, I just would like to know whether you've had any direct contact with the US Secretary General or and what your feeling is how much support is he embarrassed or very happy at your, at your m movement? <laughs> uh, we have not received any official indication from him, all right? But I believe I served the United Nations before. I know the system very well, I know the culture very well, okay? And our voice has been reached definitely, okay? And not only, uh, the because my name is here, no, 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 as a, as a former, former UN official, no. Uh, not because, maybe, more, uh, maybe more, uh, more so, because one of the secretary is Mr. Akashi, mm -hmm. <laughs> former, former assistant secretary general. He was really, really involved himself, even drafting the statement at your hand, all right? Okay. Uh, his name is still shining in the UN, uh, uh, United Nations in organization. Uh, maybe uh, that that added, okay, uh, so called maybe uh, the impact of our appeal to him, mm -hmm. right? But I don't expect we don't expect that, uh, you know, you know he's uh, you know openly what they call express the gratitude to our appeal. I don't think so. We are not expecting. This is not our purpose, okay? We quietly would like support UN role to be played over this war. I'd like to say uh, something. Um, uh, perhaps uh, uh, um, Professor Mr. Akashi's uh, influence is very big, um, but uh, as well as uh, uh, Mr. Akashi, uh, Guterres worked uh, with Ogata Sadako in a refugee uh, camp. Uh, he was uh, coming to the uh, general secretary of UN. Uh, he worked in a refugee camp, uh, UNHCR as well. So that's why he very much uh, respect Ogata Sadako and consider uh, collaboration in Africa, Asia, especially with Japan. So that's why we consider or we uh, hope he is a little um, impressed about our Japanese uh, historians, researchers, and Korean researchers uh, wish to make a war with other Asian uh, people or African people as well. Thank you. Okay, uh, any, any questions from the floor? <laughs> the lady there, please, please come forward. Yep, go ahead. Just mic on the size of the size of the size. Thank you for your statement and appeal. I read it uh, during this uh, press conference. And uh, I understand that the Guterres who were coming to attend the Hiroshima Day mm -hmm. this year, uh, he made a comment yesterday at the United Nations speech, and I've, I've heard that. So I think it would be a great opportunity to make an appointment, try to meet him. Uh, and uh, I'd like to support, and uh, the rest of the foreign media should support to make it happen. How do you like the idea? Can you uh, cite your affiliation, if you can, if you don't mind? I'm a freelance, I'm a freelance and I'm an editor-in-chief of Accessible 
uh, world.net. Sure, sure. Your name That's is? Sarah Yamasaki. Thank you. Hey, thank you. So the question is, are you going to directly um, approach? Your the offer thank, you. Is <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your proposal. Thank you uh, very much. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, your offer is excellent and wonderful. Uh, my father was get an atomic bomb in Hiroshima. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's why I am the second uh, generation of the Hiroshima uh, yeah. uh, atomic bomb. So uh, that's why um, Guterres' uh, performance is uh, excellent and uh, we'd like to wish to uh, collaborate with him and to make a uh, seize of the nuclear weapon as well. Thank you very much for your kind offer. Indeed, uh, thank you very much. And uh, we would like to work on <laughs> that proposal. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, please correct me. Uh, you know, on the issue of uh, the coming, upcoming uh, peace day, and the Hiroshima mm -hmm. to commemorate atomic bomb, uh, dropping atomic bomb. And the Japanese government officially rejected mm -hmm. to, to extend the invitation to the Russian government. Mm -hmm. That is still the same? Mm -hmm. You think so? Mm -hmm. The same. I think uh, we have, to, uh, I really want to appeal journalists here to question this attitude of the Japanese government, okay? Do you think that because Mr. Putin indicated the usage of uh, the, uh, nuclear weapon, okay? okay? Because of that, we have to invite the Russian government. Don't you think so? We have to let, let them understand what will happen if they use. And they have to realize they should be, they should be the first one to be, to be extended an invitation to let them know the misery of nuclear weapon. Okay. I really want to sensitize Japanese media to, to officially lodge the complaint to the Japanese government okay, over the ban of invitation. That is, that is another form of engagement, okay? It's another form of engagement, what we are talking about, and dialogue. In my opinion, perhaps Russia, Putin, will not use uh, atomic bomb in Europe because they, uh, he wished to rule of Ukraine. Uh, before the um, rule of the Ukraine, he will not use atomic bomb in uh, Europe. And European people, uh, especially European Union, are uh, very much against such a war or using atomic bomb, even in a, a small atomic uh, missile used in a, um, a NATO uh, Kosovo uh, conflict. Uh, Italian and uh, EU people are very much angry about that. The United States used uh, atomic uh, missile in uh, Europe. So this is also a little double standard. It might be used in Syria or uh, Middle East, <laughs> but uh, they don't want to use in uh, Europe. So if Putin used an uh, atomic bomb in Europe, he was completely uh, isolated from the uh, uh, European Union or European uh, countries. So perhaps not in Europe, but in East Asia might be used atomic bomb. We are very much afraid about that. Uh, the United States already used in you know, the Second World War. So they can use for Asians or Africans or Central Asians. Um, we'd like to profit and uh, to yes profit to use that with bomb. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah, just to follow up, the uh, city of Hiroshima has historically uh, 
uh, sent out the invitations to the leaders of all uh, countries that possess the uh, nuclear weapons, as well as their um, uh, ambassadors in, in, in Japan. But uh, uh, this year, they have said that uh, uh, they decided not to invite the Russian uh, uh, President Putin and uh, the ambassador, uh, Gruzin, uh, as well. So um, that's that. That is the situation uh, that the Isidex and has asked. Um, any more questions from the floor? Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> let me let me just follow up on the the, the previous question. Yeah, just quickly. Um, you mentioned uh, many of you mentioned the censorship, or I guess it's the self censorship. But uh, what's behind Japan's um, sort of uh, widespread? Um, self-censorship uh, when it comes to reporting on this uh, Ukrainian uh, situation. Um, and uh, as a result, the Japanese public opinion is uh, more one-sided than even, even the United States. Um, why, why Japanese people reacting that way to this uh, uh, conflict uh, in spite of the fact that Japan did have uh, Relatively good relationship with the, with the, with Russia under uh, Prime Minister uh, late Prime Minister Abe. So wh why suddenly Japan has become so anti-Russia and pro-Ukraine? Ukraine is that the U.S. Uh, um, or is there any other reasons that you can see that Japan, Japan is uh, so Japanese reaction is so one-sided on this issue? Donataka. This is this is partly because uh, uh, this Russian Russian war uh, Russian war against Ukraine is a uh, uh, is a terrible terrible war enough so uh, uh, to. Allows uh, antipathy among our people, uh, and uh, if once uh, people uh, 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 remind of uh, uh, old memories, then. Um, Bad, bad impression about Russia uh, in in the war. Uh, came back, and uh, so uh, Russian war, Russian war in Manchuria, uh, and. Uh, uh, Russia, Soviet Russia uh, caught many uh, war prisoners and uh, detained in Siberia. So such bad memories returns. Then uh, our people are uh, accustomed to to, to uh, accept the established, officially established uh, uh, understandings of the e event. Uh, so uh, so this this happens. Uh, no, no. Mm. I think. I see. <clears throat> but uh, Japanese priority of uh, diplomacy and po foreign policy is a well known Japan US alliance. So I. Uh, we cannot uh, condemn or we cannot criticize the US policy 
um, in any time. Uh, President uh, Fujisaki, he is a U.S.-Japan uh, Friendship Association, uh, and uh, he is uh, uh, president of Nakasone Institution. Uh, he said it is very interesting. Uh, if uh, every time uh, American uh, president policy changed uh, 180 uh, <laughs> degree uh, from Trump, uh, from Obama to Trump, or Trump to uh, Biden, but uh, every time we will obey to the American policy, it is a Japanese policy. So that's why uh, when uh, uh, Trump government, uh, Japanese uh, government, uh, is very good relation, of course, with uh, Trump, uh, not only Trump, but also Putin as well. It is American policy. But uh, now the Biden is very much uh, concentrated to the Ukrainian war and against Putin, so the Japanese policy was uh, against to the Russia, and uh, that's why we cannot consider about the um, objective uh, analysis or investment uh, investigation uh, uh, academic people or uh, academic people are uh, doing, but the media is very, very difficult, uh, of course, in our government as well. It was very interesting. I was in uh, uh, United States in this March uh, United States is much more freely discuss about the Ukrainian war. Someone against the Ukrainian war and against Russia, uh, but uh, someone is very much consider about the ceasefire or uh, sometimes uh, uh, explain about the Putin's behavior as well. But when I came back to Japan, I was very much surprised uh, Japanese people is only one side mm. in discussion, uh, media and uh, everything. It is um, completely, uh, you are right, right. Uh, Japanese mm. censorship is under uh, the uh, United States um, diplomacy, mm. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, you said, like some, you said like some may be able to answer this, but I can see the government has some, um, say, you know, restraint because it, it's, you know, its main diplomatic uh, partner is the United States, so they have to go by the uh, U.S. Uh, line, whatever, what, whatever that is. But why media, though? I mean, media in Japan is supposed to have a free, you know, free speech, and the media is free to uh, take any any stance or uh, report anything to us as long as it's factual. But uh, some reason, media uh, direction of the media coverage on this issue is. Uh, Almost identical to uh, to uh, that of the uh, Japanese government, uh, and uh, what is the behind the uh, media's uh, sort of a, uh, you know one-sided uh, approach to this issue? Uh, if uh, like some, or have <laughs> say can if I uh, add uh, your view on this? Uh, I think this is a kind of uh, you know uh, self-defense. Mechanism, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, because it, we don't want to realize okay, what we are, actually. Okay. In the beginning of this controversy uh, of uh, fighting for self-censorship in mm -hmm. this country, especially academia, right? academia opposing mm -hmm. us. Right? You know, there was a discussion whether Japan is a one of the buffer state or not. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, surprisingly. Certain faction of the political circle and also academia don't want to recognize that. Mm. Okay. Geopolitically, mm. yes, it's undeniable. Mm. Japan is one of the buffer, buffer state. Mm. Buffer mm. state mm. is more vulnerable than Ukraine, maybe, mm. because we have uh, two additional, mm. two more uh, <laughs> uh, uh, presumed enemies, which is China and North, Co uh, North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> but, and the three, three, all of them had a nuclear weapon mm. ca ca mm. capability. All right. You know, then, you know, uh, buffer state, okay, vulnerability of the buffer state, okay, only way to escape from the, the, that notion to be recognized in the conscience is that to be a 
part of the United States. That's all. Mm-hmm. Isn't that? If you become a part of the United States, we are not buffer state. Mm-hmm. Buffer state. Isn't it? Because we are a United States. Mm-hmm. But that one, that notion also sometimes unacceptable. But mm-hmm. this is true. This is the kind of reaction of self-defense mechanism. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. It's up to the um, development or um, the um, maturity of the media, um, uh, media or uh, politics as well. Uh, at least in the United States, there is uh, two parties and uh, always change mm. the parties. Mm. That's why the politics and uh, diplomacy uh, is also changing. Mm. Uh, it is a very good thing for democracy. But uh, in Japan, there is an uh, election, and there is, uh, what I say, the um, uh, democracy. <laughs> but uh, one party system is continuing after the uh, Second World War, a very long time. Uh, it is said about the media, uh, um, media, uh, what I say, uh, um, uh, free, free level. Mm. Uh, now Japan is 71, uh, 71 first country uh, of the world. Uh, it was said uh, um, Democratic Party's government uh, at that time 10th. Uh, of the world. Mm. Uh, Democratic Party government uh, was very a uh, uh, difficult situation. That's why media criticized very much. Mm. It was a free uh, media uh, discussion. Mm. But uh, continuing the uh, Democratic Party, it is very difficult to uh, criticize or condemn of the government. It, uh, uh, came back to themselves, their situation. Uh, Isa Dekisan said about the uh, self-defense, mm-hmm. uh, or such a self-censorship as well. So we'd like to introduce two-party system, like at least South Korea. Uh, it might be changed, a uh, Japanese democracy, I think. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, we started about uh, 10 minutes late, but uh, so it's about time to wrap up. But Anthony, do you still want to uh, raise your, to take your last, uh, last stand? Okay. Um, leaving aside media, I mean, one expects academics, including historians, to be open-minded, objective people. So this is why I asked the question about how much support you are getting from academics in other parts of the world. I would have expected that every day in your mailbox you get <laughs> um, mails from Oxford or wherever saying, we agree with you, we want to join your movement. Is that not true? Not the case. Actually, yeah, and uh, even my closest circle of academia based in Europe, okay, that division mm. is really apparent. Mm. Okay? And division is not equal division, okay? Mm. The, uh, division is more, uh, one side is really, really overwhelming, other, 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 other side, okay? And um, to talk about this war more in the relativity sense, mm. okay? How many of you agree that this war at this stage, okay, I'm not talking about the viewpoint from the Ukrainian side who are fighting on the ground, who are sacrificing ground, mm-hmm. but from outside the view, eh, mm-hmm. is, this is the typical proxy war. Mm-hmm. All right? Mm-hmm. And what a sense, beautifully termed this war, it's a mm-hmm. Biden, it's mm-hmm. a dream war. Mm-hmm. Because they don't have to send their, their servicemen on the ground, okay? Just sending a weapon and benefiting war industry, isn't it? All right. This is a dream war. It's a typical proxy, proxy war, mm. isn't it? That notion, it's an obvious notion, is rejected. We cannot talk about these things. Okay, 
how to term this war academically. That is the situation we are in. I think I am a peer of the community of journalism okay, to take action. All right? If we continue like this, this proxy war will prevail and continue. Isn't it? How many loss of the people you are talking about here? Every day. Every day. Okay? I'm repeating one of the sentences in my speech is that ceasefire is not the surrender. I can okay, say uh, something. Um, um, uh, my friends, uh, many friends are uh, Europeans, um, but uh, there is a difference between a uh, uh, researcher of international relations and a researcher of history of international relations. Mm -hmm. um, perhaps uh, in Japan as well, historian are more objective <laughs> and uh, perhaps more what I say um, there is a, a distance from uh, government or reality so that's why um, historian is more academic than international relationist in Japan as well uh, the, my friends or my uh, colleagues of the international relations are uh, completely against Russia and support Ukrainians, even liberals as well. And it is very sorry, uh, young people also very much uh, support the Ukraine, and young students also wish to, uh, we wish to become stronger uh, against China or like uh, against uh, Russia. So um, it is uh, awful. Uh, we need to uh, make a distance from reality like historians, and it might be more objective and more academic, I think. So uh, what the sensei is one of the most uh, important uh, uh, yes, hero <laughs> of the academician, I think. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, the addressing Anthony's uh, questions in part uh, is that uh, that's why we are holding this press conference, so that the world will know that these people do exist and these people uh, have released such statement. Uh, of course, they have their own website, but uh, you know how much media reports they get uh, very much uh, determines how, how how widely this, uh, such a message um, uh, you know, reached. And as you might see, uh, there's no Japanese media camera, uh, not even one. Uh, <laughs> that uh, camera is actually uh, my, my company's camera, and the other one is FCCJ camera. Mm -hmm. So um, that kind of reflects the, uh, the, the you know, situation in the Japanese media right now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they know that the, uh, the today's speakers will call for ceasefire and media are not interested in the ceasefire at all. Yeah. So, um, so we have a long way to go, but uh, <laughs> uh, let's uh, pick up on boy one. Uh, uh, Sensei Gato, thank you very much. Thank you, uh, and uh, thank you. Uh, and I apologize for the uh, uh, delay uh, uh, at the beginning of this press conference. Uh, thanks for coming uh, to a press conference at the CCJ. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Are you American?